Howdy. Welcome to Crisis Chords. Woo! Understanding the music of Final Fantasy VII. Can everybody hear me okay? Is all good? Yes. Beautiful. Everybody in the back? Beautiful. Excellent. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for being here at 10 a.m. on Friday. Woo! It literally feels like I'm going to school right now. <laughs> um, so uh, I teach at University of Illinois Chicago. I teach music composition there as well as jazz history. And I have uh, written two scores for video games, uh, being uh, The Wind and Wilting Blossom. That's the one I wrote most recently. It's on Steam. Go check it out. Have fun. All right. Um, so quick question before we jump into anything, anything at all technical. Um, how many of you are, how many of you are musicians? Let's start there. Okay, the majority. Beautiful. How many of you know some like music theory and stuff like that? Okay, basically the same people. That's great. And, and that's totally, it's totally, totally A-OK -okay fine if you don't know music theory. I'm going to try to make this as straightforward and as accessible as I possibly can. So don't worry, you're fine. And I hope I'm not talking over anybody's heads. So let's, let's go for it. So to start off, I want to talk about two kinds of listening. There's two kinds of listening, at least the way I see it. The first one, you're all really, really good at. All really good at this one. And it is emotional listening. You're all incredibly good at this. That is understanding how music makes you feel. Understanding how music makes you feel. That's, that's really all it is. That is excited or scared, happy or sad, stressed or calm, etc. All those sorts of all those sorts of feelings, right? We all know I could play you anything and you'd be able to say, oh, I like this because it makes me feel happy or whatever. Or the, if I asked you about the music you like the most, you'd probably tell me, oh, I like this because I enjoyed this on a cold, gloomy day and I'm very sad and it's nice to listen to, right? Yes, we're all in an agreement there, hopefully. Okay, the other side of that is analytical listening. Okay, so we have emotional listening, we have analytical listening. And analytical listening, when it really comes down to it, is just labeling the sounds that we hear. That's all music theory is. Anybody who tells you music theory is something harder to understand is a charlatan. But no, it's really just, it's really just uh, uh, understanding, uh, just labeling what we hear. So things like chords, scales, rhythms, etc. Okay, cool? All good so far? So we have analytical listening and we have emotional listening. And our goal here, I love this graphic, it's so great. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you Microsoft, uh, whatever this is. Okay. Um, our goal is we wanna bridge the gap between those two understandings of, of music, uh, the emotional and the analytical. And in doing so, we will hopefully be able to appreciate the craftsmanship that is the composition, the how and why of the composition. How did they do it and why did they do it, okay? So to do this, we have to first understand the emotional part. We have to first understand the thing that you're already really good at, but we're gonna try to find a way to verbalize that, okay? And I'm gonna use this, uh, uh, this exercise that I like to call the road. The road, okay? Have you guys have any of you guys been to any of my panels before? Okay, oh, even better. Okay, there's a couple people. Great. So some of this will be some of this will be uh, <laughs> you've heard some of this before. It'll be good practice. Okay, so the road. All right. So as you're listening to a piece of music, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. I want you to imagine that you're driving on a road. Okay? Imagine you're driving on a road and ask yourself things like, how would you describe that road? Is it bumpy or smooth? Are you driving fast or slow? Uphill, downhill, curved or straight? Really any of those things that you can think of, just start labeling those in your head. Start imagining this road in your head. Okay? 
Ask yourself, what's the landscape like? What's the setting like? Where are we? What are we listening to, right? What do we see? What is the weather like? What's the atmosphere like? What are the colors that you may see? And do these things change? And if they change, do they change suddenly? Something happens that makes that change happen? Or uh, uh, do they happen slowly? Is there some sort of slow change? The, the idea here is that we're building this just scene that's purely based on the music that we're hearing. We're trying to divorce it from any other context and just make essentially a new context inside our head. All making sense so far? Cool? So what I want you to do is keep your ears open for things that I like to call ERMs, or eyebrow raising moments, okay? When you're listening and you hear something that is surprising in some way. This would be an eyebrow raising moment. And that eyebrow raising moment may uh, manifest in some way in that scene that you're developing in your head, okay? As I mentioned before, building a narrative. That's essentially what you're doing here. You're building a narrative. You're setting a scene, something happens, maybe an eyebrow raising moment happens which causes something different to happen in your head. But again, we're just trying to get away from the context of the music initially and bring it to our own in our head context. Okay? Making sense so far? All good? Great? Cool. So let's try Let's try this. And now I'm going to play a tune, and then we're going to discuss it. But what I want you to do is try this road exercise. And seeing as you're all Final Fantasy VII music fans, you're going to recognize it. I can almost guarantee that you're going to recognize this piece of music. But what I want you to do is, again, try to divorce it from the context. Don't tell me when I ask you about the road, be like, oh, this is Cloud on a motorcycle. You know, try, try, to, try to take it away from that. Okay? And just get, get in your head. All right. So let's, let's give it a listen. And I might do it twice. We'll see. But at the very least, once. And I'll ask you what you're going to see. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's listen up. Okay, so, the road. What, what sort of things are you imagining as you listen to this? Yes? Kind of imagining like uh, a slow crest over a hill, like kind of coming up and seeing like a, a landscape. Like that. So a slow crest over a hill? What kind of landscape? Just like a, a maybe a nice plain. Like nice plains, okay. No, that's beautiful, thank you. Y yes? Very smooth, no bumps, steady pace. Okay, great. Uh, I imagine just like a very slow drive through the snow. Oh, through the snow. Okay, that's interesting. A slow drive through the snow. Still a slow drive though, right? Yes, way back there. Uh, we need the urban jungle for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What for the first time ever? Urban jungle for the first time ever. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I love it. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, one more. Yes. It feels very comfortable. Like, it keeps coming back to a very comfortable place. Like, you come back to that. It feels like a roof. Like, it kind of comes up. Uh, yeah, so it feels very comfy. Feels very comfortable. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. Okay, beautiful. Yes, last one. It felt uncertain but determined. Uncertain but determined. I like that too. So the thing is, thank you guys. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so the thing is here is that we could look at any of those things, any of those things that we talked about, and there should be something in the music that is causing us to feel that way, right? We can look at any of those things. So let me just give you an idea of kind of like what I'm seeing. 
as, as I've done this many times, but <laughs> let's see. So as I'm driving, I'm, I'm seeing the planes, right? I'm driving sort of slow and comfortable, relaxed, all, the, all these things that you guys are feeling too, which I always think is interesting. We all kind of feel something kind of similar. Um, so then there's a certain point, there's a certain point when there's something large that comes into the screen, like comes into my scene that I have to go around. So for me, that's this kind of eyebrow raising moment, is this moment where I'm driving along and then there's something large that I'm going to go around, okay? So, did any of you feel something similar to that or a couple people? Okay, great. So I wanna talk about why perhaps I'm feeling that and then we'll re-listen kind of once we understand what's theoretically going on, what's analytically going on. Okay, so for those of you who didn't know, that's the main theme, Final Fantasy VII, right? And so if we're gonna analyze this, again, you don't need to know a whole lot about music theory, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a rundown here. So this is in the key of C. Does anybody have perfect pitch? Okay, then I'm sorry. Okay, so this is in the key of C. It just makes it easier to talk in the key of C. Okay, okay, so we're good. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're in the key of C, and up here on the top right, we can see our notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And if we look at the notes in the melody, it's all of those notes. We have all of those notes. That means that we're, we're playing a melody that's diatonic. Diatonic means that we're just using notes that are in that key. So like, for example, we're in the key of C. If you, went, if you guys probably have all sat down at a piano, all the white keys, we'd only be using the white keys if we're playing something that's diatonic. And if we were playing something that's, we'll talk about this later, chromatic, we'd be playing some of the black keys too. But the white keys is just diatonic. So if we're just playing everything that's in the key, nothing should necessarily Come, pop out to us as too surprising. So the melody just stays in the key of C. Nothing really that exciting about the melody. I mean, it's a great melody, but nothing really that exciting about it in, in these terms. Nothing that should be causing this eyebrow raising moment. Now let's look at the chord progression. So chords are, like I have C here in the first measure, it says C. When it says that, for those of you who aren't music theory people, it just means that it's those three notes, it's that chord. C, E, and G, those three notes together is when it just says C. It's a C major chord. Okay, is this making sense so far? Okay, great. So in that first measure, we have a C major chord, C, E, and G, all diatonic. Melody, all diatonic, all cool. Nothing that should be really too surprising. Second measure, we have an A minor chord. It's A, C, and E. Those are the notes in that chord and we have B and A in the melody. Okay, well, there's nothing really there that's too, too surprising. Third measure, same thing. We have a C major chord, C, E, G again, with C, D, and E in the melody. So nothing that that's, uh, uh, should be causing that, that surprise. But in the fourth measure, in the fourth measure, we have an A flat major chord. Ooh, we can see that the A flat major has A flat and an E flat. So again, if we were at a piano, we'd suddenly, we'd have all white keys this whole time, all white keys, and then suddenly, all these black keys. Oh, it's very surprising. Uematsu has pulled the rug out from under us. He set it up as if we're just in the key of C, and then all of a sudden, plays a couple chords, this A flat major chord and this B flat major chord, with these notes that are very unexpected. And we're gonna listen back to that so we can, we can hear that. Now what I like so much about this melody is that it repeats. If we look at the second line of music, you can see the melody, even if you can't read music, you can see that it's the same thing, right? But in that fourth measure, where we originally had the A flat major to the B flat major chord, we now have an F major chord. Oh here, I think I can actually, can I do this? Oh wait, boom, oh yeah. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have this F major chord right here where originally we had the A flat major 
and B-flat major chord. So what's interesting is we get to hear these two different versions of the same material. So let's listen to that again, now that we kind of know what's happening, and see if we can feel that and understand what we're hearing. Here we go. You guys feel how different that was the second time through? Like the first time had this nice like, like this nice rise to it. And the second time just sort of settles. You, you guys feel that? Non-musicians or non-music theory people, are you feeling that and understanding that? Beautiful, wonderful, okay. So before we, before we move on, uh, theory people, this A flat major and B flat major chord, what, what what is that? What could we call that? What's, what, yeah? Flat six, flat seven. Flat six, flat seven. How about another option? Yeah? They're in the relative minor, or the parallel minor. Uh-huh, parallel minor, yeah. The Mario cadence. The Mario cadence, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's also true. Uh, uh, yes? Mode mixture, modal mixture, modal interchange, borrowed chords. We, hopefully you non-music ma <laughs> major, sorry, I'm thinking school mode right now. You, <laughs> you non-music theory folk are saying, oh my gosh, there's all these names for the same thing. But really what it comes down to is it's just something we didn't expect. That's all it comes down to. It's something that we didn't expect. We were in the key of C major, all white keys, and then suddenly there were a few black keys being played. Okay? So that's really what, what, comes, what it comes down to here. Cool? Let's, let's move on to another example, all right? So, another song that, again, I'm sure you will recognize, but let's give it a shot, let's give it a listen, and just see, uh, uh, use that road exercise, just to try to see what you're seeing when you hear this. Here we go. So road, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Yes. Um, rapid lane shifting to dodge obstacles while also being swarmed by airborne attackers. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah. being swarmed by airborne attackers. Absolutely. Yes. Um, the the, the base line makes it feel like it's, it, you're being pushed along. You're being pushed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I agree with you. Uh, uh, Try to stick, so I, that's wonderful, thank you. Try to stick in the like emotional headspace though and try to remove yourself a little bit from the, from the analytical. analytical one. Cause that, cause that we, we wanna try to start there and then connect that, cool? Yeah, no, it's, that was great though, thank you. Uh, yes. I feel unsettled. Unsettled, love it, I agree. <laughs> yes? Terrible weather, don't know where to go. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, either, but, but either or. Okay, roller coaster rather than a car. Okay, and then and then the uh, yes. Uh, it feels very uneven. Like it feels very unpredictable. Uneven, unpredictable. Oh, I completely agree. One more for way in back. Uh, danger. Danger. <laughs> that's yes. I agree. That's a good. That's a good place to move on. Yes, danger. Okay. So we talked about in the last one how we could use certain chords connected with the melody to make it feel sort of, you know, unsettled or, or, or you know, give us that surprise here. Here, uh, uh, it, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Again, we could talk about all of those different things that we're feeling and attach something in the music to that. But the one I want to look at is a little bit different. Uh, I want to look at meter. I want to look at meter. What is, does anybody, can anybody give me an idea of what meter is before we, yeah. Is how we divide stress and unstress beats. I love it. That's such a great academic answer. That's great. <laughs> that's, re that's very good. In, 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 in layman's terms, uh, if you think about like a pop tune or something, we usually have something that's in four, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the stressed and unstressed beats, right? Absolutely. So we have, we have, we're dividing we're dividing the music in this metric way into groupings of four, okay? One, two, three, four. Now, if we were listening to like a pop song or something like that, like we usually have like a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus, those types of sections, right? How long, how many measures would each of those sections probably be? Eight, 16, maybe a four in there, right? Maybe a 32, probably not though, but some, something divisible by four. So groupings, so measures of four, one, two, three, four. And then also sections in measures of four, eight, 16, something like that. Okay, cool. So let's talk about how this defies that expectation. Because like us as people just living in the world, that's the kind of music that we hear 90, 95% of the time. I mean, it's a little different talking to video game music enthusiasts, but if we were to turn on the radio, 99% of the time we'd hear things in four and with groupings of four in each section or eight or 16, something like that. Okay, so let's talk about why this is not that. So this first section, the A section, if you will, is in six four. It's in 6-4. Now, we're going to listen to this, and I'll count it out, show you how it works. But it's in 6-4. It's already a little bit strange because, like, we're used to hearing things in 4. And if we look here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 measures. We have 6 measures of 6-4 for a section. Well, this is already defying expectations in some interesting ways. Again, we're used to hearing things in 4, groupings of 4, everything 4, and this is not that. So let's listen to this. Let's listen to this first A section. And I'll try to count it out. I might miss the first couple beats. Here we go. Okay? So it's in 6 4. Groupings of six, six, and then it's also in a section that's six bars long, okay? So let's look at the next section. Oh boy. <laughs> so, again, pop music is probably gonna be in four the entire time, and it's gonna be in groups of four the entire time. And already, on the bar seven of this tune, we're into four, one, two, three, four, and then we for two bars, and then seven for three bars. Okay, so let's give this a listen, this B section, and see what's going on there. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start that over. One, sorry. What I do? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, that's that's true. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> did, I, did I count something weird? <laughs> yes, okay, good, okay. <laughs> that, was a, that was a brain fart moment. All right, yes, absolutely. So two bars, two bars of four, three bars of seven. Okay, got it? Making sense so far? Good. All right, so B section. C section. Ho oh, ho. Okay, so C section. We go into 7 8. So, where we are counting the quarter note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Now we're counting the eighth note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So, we're counting the eighth note, it is three bars of 7 8 for th three bars, right? And then we're going back to four for two bars. And we're going to repeat this whole thing twice. Okay, let's, let's listen to that. Oh, pretty wild, right? Okay. Starting to f understand why we feel kind of unsettled? Because we haven't had a moment to settle. <laughs> okay, so the D section, moving on. The D section is in 6-4. We go back to 6-4. Oh, oh, great, wonderful. We're back into 6. Uh, but look at, these, look at these, these phrase lengths, right? We have a 5-bar phrase length followed by a 7-bar phrase length. So five and seven in six. <laughs> Goofy, right? Okay, so let's listen, let's listen to this and count along. And then we'll do the whole thing. Here we go. back at the top again. Yeah, so let's try to listen to this whole thing. This is our form. So form is just how the thing is constructed, right? If we were talking about a pop song, we might have a pre or a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus, then a verse, a pre-chorus, and a double chorus, then maybe a bridge or something like that, right? Here, we have these different sections. So we have A section, B section, C section, D section, and it goes A, B, A, B, C, D. Okay. Let's see if we can follow along. I'm going to take a quick drink of water before I have to count all this. <laughs> all right. Let's give it a shot, folks. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, you see? 
and how, and how perfect, thank you, thank you. The, how perfect is, is it that it's hurry up, right? Like it's just, it's everything. It's everything. It's everything you could want from a title. It's perfect. Okay. Beautiful. All good so far? All good in the hood? All right. All right. Okay. Let's check it out. So let's try, let's try something else. Okay. So let's listen. Let's do our road, right? We're, get, we're getting the hang of this. Getting the hang of it. All right. Another tune that I'm sure everybody will recognize, but you know, again, just take it out of that context. Here we go. Okay, let's give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. Driving fast, but in control of the vehicle. Oh, that's fascinating. I like that. Yeah. He's <laughs> trying to get somewhere, but super stressed out. Yeah, absolutely. Steep, steep incline, constantly shifting gears. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yes. Of like in a truck trying to carry a heavy load. Oh, yeah, in a truck trying to carry a heavy load, steep incline. Yes. Uh, it's a pretty straight road, but it's poorly maintained. There's lots of potholes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Poorly maintained road. <laughs> See, I'm from Chicago, so that just that just resonates <laughs> resonates with me very much. Yeah. Okay. So also control, though. There's still control yes. there. Whereas maybe the last one, there was less control. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so last one. I'd say starting like a race, straight race down a straight road, you're about to get going. Straight race, straight road. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you, folks. Thank you for sharing. So this is those who fight are in control, right? Okay. Those who fight, <laughs> it's, it's in the key of A minor. I forget if this one actually is, so I, <laughs> two perfect pitch people can tell me. Um, okay, anyway, so those who fight, A minor. So we're trying to figure out why are we feeling maybe some of those things, right? Why does it maybe feel like, like it's poorly maintained, or why is there some, something, what, like what's unsettling about it, right? Um, um, okay, so we have here, up here, the key of A minor, and if we look, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Easy peasy, easy peasy, no problems. Now, if you look at this first bit, we have here, first measure, we're just gonna hear A's. That's it, just a whole lot of A. And then when we get to the, the bulk of it here, we have A, E, G, all right, against an A. That should be all good, nothing strange there. But then, just like we had in, the, in, the, in that first track we listened to, we have these notes that are very surprising, right? We have a B flat here, in this upper voice, and we have a B flat here in this lower voice, and then it goes back to a B flat. So we're gonna let's let's listen to that for just a second. And the interesting thing here, well, here let's just let's just listen to that just that little bit briefly. Okay. Okay. So that's what's going on there. That's what we're hearing. Now. Well, we're actually, it, does it feel already a little bit like uneasy? Like to me it does, it already feels like a little uneasy and it's because of this interval we have right here. An interval is just the distance between two notes, right? If you went up to a keyboard and you played one finger here and one finger here, that would be an interval, right? Two notes together. So this interval, this A to a B flat is a minor ninth. It's a minor ninth. You don't need to necessarily, again, you, you non-music theory people, you don't need to know that it's a minor ninth, but this is how it feels. So this is just, this is just a minor ninth kind of in con or out of context, just to hear how, we, how it sounds. <laughs> kind of unsettling, right? And so even though this is going quick, right there, 
we're still going to feel that. Even though it's, it's not held out like we just heard it, we're still feeling that, that minor ninth sound. Let's hear that again, just, that, just the context. Here we go. You guys, see, you guys feel that? Oh, it's so nice. It's just like, ooh, it's tense. It's great. So, yeah. Just even before we hit the second measure, the unevenness of the bass notes. Oh, absolutely. The une and, and that's, and, and I absolutely agree with you. As, as I kind of was mentioning before, like we, could, we could pull out so much from this music. There's so much to talk about. And like, we could just talk about this tune for like the entire hour if we wanted to. And we could talk about that rhythm, but that dum 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 right? That rhythm, oh, it's, it's, it's already uneasy and makes you kind of driving forward. But, okay, so cool. So, the next little bit that we have, this do, 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 right? That bit? So, if we look at that, you know, this is what, so a few people mentioned kind of like going up a hill, right? This is that moment that I feel like is going up a hill. And because and it, 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 it's building the intensity, right? It, the, the, the melody line keeps rising and rising and rising, right? And we can see that it's just the same idea over and over. A, B, C, D, E, G. A, B, C, D, E, G. A, B, C, D, E. It just keeps rising, though. That's all that's really going on there. And so let's, let's just jump to that section really quick. Uh, uh, so we, I'll, I'll mention this first. So it's that rising of the same idea over and over three times. And it's also against these chords of an A minor, A, C, E, nothing, nothing chromatic, right? All diatonic, right? Nothing out of the ordinary. An F major chord, nothing out of the ordinary. And a D minor chord, D, F, A. Nothing out of the ordinary. So it's just kind of this, it, it's pretty cool because we have this like, this nice like binary opposition or, or, or contrast going on right there where we have this very chromatic thing going on right here this, with all those surprises of those B flat and that minor ninth going into something that's not that, that's all diatonic. So we have this chromatic thing to a more uh, uh, diatonic or, or, or dissonant thing to a more consonant thing. Let's, let's listen to those two sections and see if we can hear all that. Okay, we're jumping the gun a little bit, but yes, okay. So, you kind of seeing how, how that feels? It, it, there's a different feeling there, right? And it's, it's moving us to imagine something a little different. Okay, so last, last little bit from this tune. I just want to talk about where we, where we just wound up. And we have these two notes right here. Da, da. We'll, we'll hear it, we'll hear it, don't worry. But we have these two notes, an E flat to an A, or A to an E flat. What, what is that interval, somebody who's knowledgeable in that sort of thing? <laughs> it, tritone, oh, it's a tritone, yep, there we go, tritone. So those of you who haven't heard a tritone before, this is what a tritone sounds like in that kind of, here we go, this is a tritone. Kind of, kind of tense, right? So let's listen for that moment right there uh, in, the, in the track. We also, as you can see right here, we hit nail on it, right? He hits the tritone. Da, da, and then ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, 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 that bit. You'll, you'll hear it. You'll hear it. It's great. But there, we nail on this tritone. Really rail on it. Okay, let's listen. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Did you guys feel that? Yeah. Oh, it's great. And then we at the end, we just have this other B flat too. So it's, 
it, it, but it's mainly what's about there is that tritone and just railing on it. And that's like creating that discomfort, creating that uneasiness. Okay? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, any questions on any of that? All good so far? All right, is this all making, non-musicians, is this making sense? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, let's move on to another one. Okay, so this one, because I would be remiss if I neglected to talk about the remake. <laughs> what kind of person would I be? Okay, so this is something from the remake, which will be obvious. Have I, has everybody played the remake? Yes? No? Oh, okay, some people have. Not everybody? All right, great. So this is from the remake. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's listen to a little bit of this. Really short excerpt. So, road. What are people feeling? Yes. I'm feeling melancholy. Melancholy. Ooh, that's great. I love that. Yes. It's more like a horse than a car. <laughs> more like a horse than a car. Oh, and there's so many reasons that could be. Oh, it's great. Yes. Country road. Country road. Okay. Country road. Yes. Yeah, I was driving through the cornfields at dusk. The cornfields at dusk. I, I, again, I also live in Illinois, and that's uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah. Oh, shiny car, hot date. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. I'm thinking about... I'm thinking about um, driving up to a town that might have been lively at one point. You can tell that not many people live there anymore. It's kind of just there a little bit. Old town, ghost town. Might not, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. That's that's wonderful. Thank you guys for the imagery. I hope. I, and again, isn't it kind of interesting that we're seeing similar things? Like, there, maybe there's a reason for that, right? And, and there's many reasons for that. We could, again, really beat it to death. But let's, let's talk about a couple things here. So first off, this is called Hollow. It's the new piece written by Nobuo Ematsu for, for the remake, right? So those of you who haven't heard that before, that's just a little, a little taste of that. So again, we want to try to figure out why like, I loved that melancholy description. That's like, oh, that's after my heart right there. That's great. So we're in the key of E minor, and we actually are in the key of E minor, perfect pitch people, okay? So <laughs> we're in the key of E minor, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. So if you were at a piano, it would be almost all white keys, but then just an F sharp in there too, one black key. So what's going on here, that's pretty interesting is I want to just focus on this first chord especially. We have this C major chord, C, E, G. We've talked about that chord a few times already, a C major chord. And we have an F sharp in the melody. The harmonica is playing an F sharp, and the chord is a C major chord. So there's a reason why this is, there, there's something to be talked about here. What is, what is a C to an F sharp, somebody who, who knows? Tritone, oh my god, it's a tritone, just like we talked about not, not a mere five minutes ago. Okay, so we have a tritone. So, to give a quick explanation of how we typically, like, choose chords when we're, when we're right, we have a melody, and how we, <laughs> how we typically would choose a chord. We typically are looking at the first note of a measure, and we're choosing a chord that contains that note. And I know there's, there's, there's alarm bells going off in some of my music theory pals things, but, but essentially the most basic way to do it would be we look at the first note and we choose a, a chord that contains that note. So here, 
the note was F sharp, but he chose a C major chord, C, E, G. There's no F sharp in C, E, E, G, right? There's no F sharp there. So why would we choose that chord? He's purposely choosing a note, or rather, he's purposely choosing a chord that doesn't contain that note from the melody. And more so, it's one of the most dissonant notes that we could choose. Okay, so, the interesting thing is here, is that if we, if we went off on, you know, my, what I was just talking about, and we could say, okay, well, well, let's pick a chord instead that has that F sharp in it. Because that would make more sense, right? It would just make more sense. So let's, let's, let's listen to some of those options. So first, we're going to listen to an F sharp diminished. Well, I should say first, let's just, get this, let's just get this context thing going. So this is the original one. This is with a C major chord. It played on piano so we can all kind of get acclimated to that sound. Okay. chord okay so that's like that that's what we're hearing on the recording C major chord F sharp in the melody okay so let's try something different let's try an F sharp diminished an F sharp diminished has the notes F sharp a and C it the F sharp is in is in is in the chord so let's see if that works better How did that feel? How did, how did, yeah. So I feel like the first one felt more melancholy, well that one felt more just plain sad. Yeah. So it went from, it went from melancholy to more of like a, a just sad, yeah. just sad. Yeah. Yeah, the first one like kind of left it open-ended, it's like, you don't know the answer, and the second one is like, oh, it's just, we know. I love that. You don't know the answer with the C major chord, the answer is just handed to you with the F sharp diminished chord. Sad. Yeah, one more. Yeah, I would say as a non-music person, it just feels, it just doesn't feel subtle. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no subtlety there. It's just, phew, here it is. Okay, great, let's, thank you. Let's try, let's try another one. Okay, let's try a D major chord. D major, that's, that has an F sharp in it. Let's hear how that sounds. I love how some people are already like laughing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, how did that, yeah? It's just totally off message. It's off message, it's off brand. It's off, what's the, what's the, the uh, off model, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, when we get to the minor chord, like, it just doesn't, just doesn't feel as much like it dissolves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes? It feels like, okay, everything's happy. Wait, is it? <laughs> everything's happy, wait, is it? Uh, yes. Bittersweet. Sweet and bittersweet. Okay, I like that. Which, like, again, like, this is, we've just changed a chord. We just, we just made it more obvious. We just added a chord or changed the chord to something that makes more sense, right? But it, it doesn't emote the same thing, right? Yeah, last one. I feel like if, if that motif were to make another appearance, later in the game, maybe you should just like throw it back in in the larger piece, like I'm thinking how Midgar Expressway just gathered so many pieces from, el from elsewhere in the game. Absolutely. Then you could like throw that in there as a heroic reprise, just like a little heroic callback. Absolutely. So if we reused it later in the game, and perhaps it was, it was supposed to send, send a different message, right? A different emotional message, then that might work great. But here, not really so much. Let's just try one more option, because, just because we can. So let's just talk about this B minor chord. B minor, 
has all the notes, B, D, F sharp, has an F sharp, should be great. Okay, here we go. Couple quick thoughts. Any, any, yeah? Now we have a funeral march. Now we have a funeral march. Yeah. It just, it's, 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 it's just like darker, right? Uh, yeah? yeah I was say, it's, more, it's longing, but it's not melancholic. So it's not, it's just kind of got this kind of feeling of, uh, I miss the good old days. <laughs> I miss the good old days. Uh, when I was young. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minor just doesn't feel that much different than E minor. Yeah, there's, they're both kind of, they're just both kind of the same, B minor and E minor have kind of the same, like, emotion similar attached to them, right? Like that C major chord, completely different emotion. But the B minor is just like, yeah, this is just more of the same. Yeah. You liked it more? Embracing whatever emotion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, you're really like, okay, you're accepting this, you're here with it, I know what this emotion is. Yeah, accept, acceptance in that emotion. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Um, uh, let's, let's try to do, I, I only have like five minutes. I know, I know. I would love to just talk about this stuff all day. Um, but we'll, maybe we'll hit a few things on this one just to, I think you guys will enjoy this one. Okay, here we go. Back to the other playlist. All right, here we go. All right. Couple thoughts. Couple thoughts. Yes. Candy lamb. Candy lamb. Okay. That's that's. I mean, that's appropriate. Yeah. It feels like you're in like one of those old Disney cartoons with like the car that's like puttering along. <laughs> Disney cartoon puttering along. I like that image. Yes, Nick. It feels like I'm driving through a Christmas village. Christmas village. <laughs> also appropriate. Okay. What what is that from? Honeybee. 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 So. They are on the soundtrack called Honeybee Manor or Honeybee Inn, right? And uh, uh, let's, let's just talk a little bit about a couple of the interesting things going on here. So this piece just defies expectation. That's really what it comes down to. It's defying every expectation that we have. Okay, so first off, we have this clock. Let's, let's just uh, uh, hear that. Uh, I don't know if I can get to it immediate, easily right now. Wait, maybe I can. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. This is how the tune actually has the introduction. So that bloop, 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 bloop. That's, that's what we're seeing here. And what's going on is we're playing an E and an F together, which are two notes that are directly next to each. If you went to a piano, E and F right next to each other. So we're playing E and F, and then jumping up and playing E and F again. It's just two E and F. Do, 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 do. And this is what it sounds like if we were just, just kind of put that. Those two notes. Those two notes. Yeah. It, yeah. So kind of like kitties on a keyboard, right? Do, 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 do. Like that's, that's really what's going on there. So we have this, these, this very dissonant close interval played octaves apart, back and forth. And so that's like already kind of strange. So the melody, let's just jump to the next bit. So the melody, like that's, there's nothing really too much to say about that. There's nothing, it's all diatonic, nothing really going on there that's too strange. But the string part, or what I would call the string part, is right? What's weird about that or defying the expectation, is we expect to hear, just like we were talking about before, like we expect to hear things in groupings of four, 
like something like one two three four one two three four but this is purposely just in groupings of three oh it's so strange it's so odd let's just listen briefly to that and let's see if we can hear those two things together Get what I'm saying? So it's, it's defying the expectation. We expect to hear something that's in four, and we're hearing something that's a grouping of three against other things that are in groupings of four. Super weird, right? Like super strange. Okay. So, oh, I don't think I'm gonna have too much time to talk about all this, but just lastly, I'll just, I'll just mention this and we'll, we'll, we'll head out. <laughs> so just lastly, we have this horn part that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. It's coming on all the ands, right? So instead of like one, two, three, four, one, like right on the beat, we have one and two and three and two and three and, two and three. Then we have this bass part that instead of coming in on beats like one and three, like we'd expect a bass part to come in, like boom, boom, boom. Boom, something like that, right? Here we have one, two, one, uh, one, two, three, and one, uh. It's, it's, it's strange, and I wish I had more time to like dive into this, but unfortunately. So, um, I'll just put this, put this up, and let's just listen to that one more time, and see if you can, at the very least, catch this, this grouping of three, and then maybe what's going on right here. I don't expect you to be able to hit this too. So let's just briefly listen to that, and then we'll get out of here. It's so strange. Okay. So thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. I'll just put this up if you w wish to kind of check it out. If you, I, I, you can do all this that we're talking about with any, with any soundtrack, not just Final Fantasy. That's hopefully what you're getting from this. And if you, you know, listen for ERMs like we talked about, do that emotional listening. Try to do some analytical listening. And if you need help understanding what's going on, Reach out to a teacher, a musician friend, or even me. Cute. So you can hit me up, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram, music on the DLO, or use it YouTube, music on the DLO. Okay, thank you guys so much. That's my time. Thank you. Have a great con.